Women from around the globe are flocking to South Korea in hopes that they meet and date a guy who reminds them of their favorite K-drama heartthrob. The question is, is this the beginning of a huge shift for Asian men everywhere? Welcome to the Hot Pop Boys, everybody. David and Andrew here. David, what's going on? CNN just dropped an article on romance tourism to South Korea, but it wasn't white men going over there to get Korean women, Andrew. It's actually women from around the globe looking to start a long-term romance with somebody who reminds them of a K-drama guy. All right, we're going to answer the burning questions in a micro, mid, macro type of situation, guys. Is it actually working? Are women finding love or are they finding disappointment? And how does this affect Asian guys everywhere in the world? Let's talk about it. Um, if you guys are excited by this conversation or interested or you think it'll help you, please hit that like button right now and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. David, let's get into the micro, the everyday situation. What are, what are people seeing? I think both on a statistical and anecdotal level, this is happening. There are more women going to South Korea to find romance with South Korean men than the other way around. That's, that's like unheard of. No, usually it's more men seeking love overseas than women. Well, it was that way for like 60, 70, 80 years. It was like that way for maybe forever yeah. until <laughs> now. This literally has uh, broke the curse. I saw it's this crazy. really interesting quote. It said, what Hollywood did for white men for the past 100 years and what hip hop and sports did for black men over the past 50 years and what Ricky Ricardo did for Latin men for the past 60 years in the West is what K-pop and K-dramas now is doing for Korean men. Ricky Ricardo, seriously? Lucy, I'm home. It's Cuban. He was, it was an cool. appealing product. Yeah, yeah, he was cool, he was cool. Okay, so I guess, um, yeah, I mean, there was also some other interesting stories that came out of it. It doesn't work out all the time, right? There's some disappointing stories from like, for example, a Moroccan girl came out and said like, ah, you know, it didn't really work out like how I thought. And, and maybe, you know, because at the end of the day, yeah, to be honest, like the person who's going to fare the most, the best is probably like, a cute white looking girl to be honest yeah. because i mean that's, world, that is evidence to be fair by most of the couple channels you see on youtube that are wildly popular yeah it's usually European. a good looking whitish looking woman and then like a tall good looking skinny korean guy i mean you know guys uh trust me as an asian guy i can tell you tall white guys for the longest time we're doing the best by far too so anyways so it, it's not it's not weird to say that well basically long story short it's like anything in life that is nuanced with social human interaction and power leverage why mmv your mileage may vary and i think the truth is like everybody's got different stats and the person that you're chasing after they're looking for different things and you got to have like some sort of venn diagram overlap for it to like actually work you know but what i will say is this flying overseas to find love nowadays especially with international dating apps the internet ways to meet people all this culture shared culture plane tickets being a little cheaper people traveling again it's very very common so I, i'm not knocking women at all for doing this i would just say obviously manage your expectations because not everybody's experience is gonna be the same and also not to mention obviously not every guy in Korea acts like the K-drama guys let's yeah, be real. I mean listen they exist for but every girl that I've seen like at least or just anecdotally right let's say they have a K fetish so they're going over to Korea to get with a bunch of Korean guys or find their dream guy there's like guys in America who do the same thing too for example Andrew I knew this nerdy Chinese guy in the Midwest from Michigan and he was like never around like ABGs and all this thing you know like and he loved ABGs Asian guys Let's be honest, they love ABGs. Like, at a, anyway, uh, they moved, he moved to like San Gabriel, right? When I know there's not as many ABGs as San Jose and Garden Grove, but there's still quite a few. And I remember it was like, it's not like just because he moved from a place with no ABGs and he loved ABGs, he didn't just hit the ground in Alhambra and just become Kevin Wynn, you know? But I always say, listen, if maybe your, your opportunities to meet this type of guy or girl is only 2% in your hometown, but you move to that environment and it 10 X's, so it's 20%, that's still a humongous increase. It doesn't mean that your chances are amazing. 20% right. is still way below yeah. 50%. It doesn't guarantee you anything, but it gives you a shot. So, right. so you that's know, just to break knocking. down the micro guys. Those are the things that like the everyday person can see from romance tourism. Getting into the mid, Andrew, um, you know, like we were saying, there's a various outcomes that could happen. Some people are happy, some people are mixed, some people feel like, you know, they're sad What's it about called? it. What's downside. the term? It's called Paris syndrome Why or halo effect. So Why? basically, um, Paris syndrome is like people going to Paris and apparently Paris is like not as impressive as everybody romanticizes it in their minds from like the 1880s. So basically Paris doesn't live up to people's expectations and apparently a lot of Japanese tourists especially get sick 
and like nauseous at having their like cognitive dissonance in their worldview like wrecked mm -hmm. when they go to France. And I think a lot of guys out there who don't look or act like the K-drama guys are wondering like, yo, why, why are so many women flocking there? Like, yeah, I guess the guys are popular, but is that really what they're looking for? And what a lot of these women are saying is that in their home countries, they're starting to feel like that it's hard to find those sensitive, emotionally connected and emotionally available men who are not hyper-masculine because they feel like maybe in certain like, especially Western countries or European countries, whatever, that a lot of the men are turning into like, I don't know, like a Pete Davidson or Machine Gun Kelly type. Chris you know? Brown, you know, anything sort of like toxic masculinity. They would, you would say that the guys represented in K-pop and K-drama, they are represented to be very appealing and still have some man traits but also mitigate the downside of being a man, being problematic and dominant and et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, right? Sure. Now, the halo effect is because, Andrew, uh, a lot of women actually write K-dramas. So they write them to be popular, not necessarily based off the reality of the situation. Mm, so honestly, these women are writing like romance novels, but they're all movies and a lot of people are believing them. But I will give them some credit, like the YouTuber couples, do the YouTube couples actually kind of make it seem like that there are a lot of these Korean guys? No, honestly. That they actually do exist? I mean, I'm sure some do and enough do, well, but. you know, that's when culture starts to come, become the chicken or the egg argument. Like, did these female writers write these guys or do these guys just fit themselves to be the K-pop stars and K-drama stars that were popping and fit their personality as they were being molded, as they were upbringing to be that? Dude, do you think South Korea is now the world's capital for this sensitive prince charming that doesn't exist in yeah, london anymore i do agree because long story short guys it's not like women are going to like end the patriarchy because i believe south korea ranks 118 out of 144 in terms of it being theoretically like a hyper patriarchal country however i do think a lot of these women want a genteel british aristocratic man you know what I mean? Similar to this Darcy guy from this Jane Austen novel, Hugh Grant, a lot of Hugh Grant's historical characters. I, the closest thing in North America I can compare it to is definitely not Bieber. Bieber's more than that Chris Brown, MGK uh -huh. Lane. I would say Ryan Gosling and uh, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds, but without the wokeness. Mm. Like imagine them, like kind of their, I guess whimsical, but still kind of like weird masculine personalities, but without the, always talking about social issues. And plus- Plus add in a whole big load of cute and like egg yo. Because you know, the Korean guys, they're still playing like the, like they're still like nice and like cute to them, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they can, they'll like play the games that like all girls like to play, but they'll play it in good faith with the girls. Yeah. Not just making the girls play beer pong and stuff. You know what I mean? Anyway, I would say other people that used to fit it in the old days, Andrew, young Tom Cruise, John Cusack, um, you know what I mean? He, like basically it's like a like dashing Air Force pilot more than like a Rambo or Super Thug. And I think that that's the thing that contributes it to be seven to three in terms of like for every 10 foreigners that go to Korea looking for romance, maybe seven are women and three are men. If you look at other Asian countries, for sure you're gonna have to flip that to be like seven or 80% men, 20% women. Going off that point though, I mean, even when we visited China, we would actually meet a lot of like foreign women visiting China who had zero intention of, you know, dating a Chinese guy. Yeah, no, honestly type. for China, it might be like, 95 to point five. Granted that there is just way more tourism in China because it's a big country. But anyways, uh, guys, all that aside, let's move on to the macro of the big picture. How does this affect everybody else? Let's talk about it. I mean, I think that it affects Korean guys the most. Obviously, they're yeah, closest sure. to the blast zone. Sure. I think that Bad Bunny helps Puerto Rican guys the most. You know, right. I mean, I think that it's just like, how close are you to this thing that's like at the the ship head of the movement. Listen, there was some debate about this being a negative fetish or a harmful fetish. Listen, fetishes are fetishes, but it kind of takes two to tangle. I think that the women going there for romance tourism are kind of fetishizing Korean men. And I still think that there's a lot of Korean men in Korea that maybe studied abroad or also in their own way fetishize foreign women. So now they're just starting to match up a lot more now. So like now they're coming to Korea instead of the Korean men going out to other countries and seeking them. Um, but yeah, overall, I think the sentiment from non-Korean guys or Asian guys who don't look like Korean guys, overall, they're just like, hey man, like, you know, it might be a fetish, but overall it does help the image of Asian guys because maybe liking South Korean men is still a gateway yeah. to liking other Asian I mean, guys. People from homogenous countries, essentially like not America, not Canada, you know, not 
wherever. Like people from homogenous countries are gonna generally have stereotypical images of the other person. But sometimes you could like their stereotypes and they could like your stereotypes. And then that's when there's like a stereotypical both fetish relationship, but it works out. The dual um, fetish. I think long story short, guys, I do think if you're not Korean, you can still benefit from this if you fit that look. I mean, I think you gotta fit the look though. The K-drama, K-pop look. You got to have yeah. one of those lanes. All right, everybody, we're wrapping it up right there. Leave a comment below if, if one has popped up in your mind so far. But what I would say to a lot of guys out there, and they're like, I don't know if they feel left out or whatever, but I'm like, hey, man, like we said, going overseas to find love, to find an actual relationship that you feel like um, you're going to enjoy better or maybe you're tired of like the American dating scene or whatever, that's totally okay. And I, th I see a lot more Asian guys doing that nowadays you know, going out to no, not only Asian countries, but even like South America or Europe, you know, right, anywhere right. where they're like more going to see you as the man that you want to be seen as. Yeah. Um, obviously, go in there with right intentions and manage your expectations and don't feel entitled. And I would tell the women this that are going to South Korea, don't feel entitled either or else you're going to set yourself up for disappointment, too. But I want a gym man. I deserve one. <laughs> None of these men are good to me. I don't know. They're not treatment. I mean, I mean. Long story short, guys. I have two thoughts. Uh, one, I got to give props to South Korea because they did the work. So all the things now that they're getting from the global society and the soft power and the positive imaging, they did the work. You know what I mean? And number two, I do think there is something really interesting about like Korean guys because I know a lot of Korean people, and they're like the most adventurous and outgoing of the East Asians. Like, they're the least, like, scared. I don't know if it comes from the Mongolian side or, like, whatever. But, like, I don't know. I always noticed my, like, more nomadic friends, even in China from, like, Inner Mongolia or from, like, Dongbei, they were always chasing after the foreigner girls when I used to study there. Yeah, and then, mean, But, like, other guys were, like, too shy and not, you know, they weren't getting after it. Not, by the way, I'm not saying it's good or it's bad. I'm just, that's just my observation. Yeah, they're, they're more, uh, I guess, not scared of it. Yeah, because I think Japanese More guys. Exploratory. I think Japanese guys in the '90s had a lot of opportunities too, oh. because like some like more geeky girls were like into the anime cosplay and stuff like that. But they were like, oh no no no, I decline. Hey man, you think a lot of like Vietnamese and Chinese guys are thinking like, man, I just hope my country pours millions of dollars into the music and movie industry. Please, man, we could use the bump. Hey, man, the line's moving, guys, but make sure when you get to the line, if they, that club's got standards about what you're wearing and how to act, you got to hit those standards. Oh, David. Not to say that, you know, that's the greatest thing in life, but I will say this, Andrew. Um, it's unfortunate that we have to see each other as members of groups, and those groups comes with rankings, and those rankings of that group that we're a part of can either boost, neutralize, or downside your micro traits, but it is what it is. Um, there was this comment on Reddit that was like, yeah, it's really unfortunate that we're all associated with these groups with this other additional score beyond who we are as an individual. But until life, the world changes, then I'm just glad some Asian guys are up. Hey, man, we're going to leave it at that. Uh, let us know in the comments down below what you think about all this. Are the women setting themselves up for disappointment? Who's up next? Who's the next Asian country that's going to get the bump? Um, also, is this something that you're interested in? Would you travel overseas to seek your dream relationship, or is that a little too risky for you? Let us know in the comments down below. Please hit that like button, and uh, you are watching the Hot Pop Boys, always talking about interesting topics. You know what we do Yo, here. 20 people sent me this article, so I knew we had to talk about it. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.